I'm going to show you some workbooks that we created for the Excel Companion to Political Analysis. You can download these workbooks from the Excel Companion's website. The URL for downloading workbooks is in this video's description. We created four workbooks for our featured datasets. We use these datasets for examples in the book and also ask students to use them to solve chapter exercises. They cover a lot of interesting topics and you can do a lot with them. Excel workbooks organize information into one or more worksheets. If you've used data sets with another program, you may be used to seeing separate files for data, variable descriptions, and a basic description of the data set. With Excel, you put all of these things together in one workbook and add some features that you usually don't see in data sets like hyperlinks and interactive menus. To show you what I mean, let's take a quick look at each of the workbooks with data. Here's the state's workbook open in Excel. We're looking at the cover page here, just a bit of decorations uh, to navigate the workbook. There are two, besides this cover page, there are two other worksheet pages, the data page and the variable descriptions. You can either click the links here or go down to the tabs at the bottom. Uh, the data page, you'll see that uh, at, the, at the top, the variable labels, and down the columns, there's a the listing of states, 50, 50 states. And you can see, if we could just kind of scroll over to the right here, that there are a lot of different variables in the data set and information state by state on these different variables. To get an idea of the variables in the state's workbook, state workbook's data set, uh, you can look at the variable description page, description variables in the state's data set. Um, in this view, by default, uh, they're listed in alphabetical order, which is fine. And you can look at that uh, what category they fall into and a brief description of the variables. Something else that's kind of helpful with this is if you want to narrow it down a bit and look for particular variables, uh, this is a active table, so you can Maybe select uh, if we're interested in courts, say. Okay, and then it will limit the variable descriptions just to the ones that are related to courts. And you can see the names of the variables. Uh, the category is for these variables, of courts, and then the description. Another nice feature is if you want to take a closer look, say I want to look at uh, the violent crime rate by state, you can click on it and it's a hot link that will take you to that row or to, to, to that column on the, the data page. So you can see that the crime rate uh, state by state is listed here. And this is the kind of thing with the crime rate, say reported in, in hundreds where you'd want to look kind of closely at the variable description, see the, the violent crime rate per 100,000 population. Um, so this would be in the state, uh, I believe the first state is Alabama, that there are 635.8 crimes per 100,000 people in the state. And it's all kind of standardized on a 100,000 basis. So you can pick, compare uh, state to state on a kind of an even level. So that's just one of the variables in the data set. There are many of them. And uh, interesting facts about the state and lends to a lot of interesting analysis. I would say if you're in a class where you're required to do a research paper, and to do some like original research. I think this is a really promising one. I mean, there's a lot of variables already in the data set, but if you're interested in a topic that's not already covered, um, state level data is very accessible and a lot of sources. And with 50, 50 rows, uh, it's fairly easy to add a column in the data set, like insert a new column, and then go that yourself uh, just in a matter of once you find the data, just 10, 15 minutes maybe, and you can encode new data and then do some type of analysis that hasn't been done before. And, and that's fairly exciting. And uh, a lot of examples from the book that come from this data set and hope you find it interesting. We're looking at the world workbook now, open in Excel, looking at its cover page. This is a data, a workbook that includes data on the countries in the world. Um, in addition to this cover page, there's three other pages about the workbook. 
a data page as well as a page of variable descriptions. The about workbook workbook tells you that it contains data on countries in the world and you can find some more information of the descriptions in, in the appendix um, on the data page. We'll kind of get an overview of this. You can see that uh, the, the rows uh, or each a country in the world, Afghanistan, Albania, Algeria, etc., down to Zimbabwe as uh, the last alphabetic country in the data set. So 169 countries in total. And then the column headings give you some very brief information about the variables that are in the data set, like the country code, the democratic rank, the democratic score, life expectancy for females and males. These Variable names at the top are, are brief. Uh, and if you want to get more information about what they mean, you can click to the variable descriptions page. And this is in alphabetical order. So say that, uh, that data we were looking at, life expectancy F. Want to find out more information about that? We will kind of scroll down to find it alphabetically. Okay, so life expectancy. Yeah. Life expectancy at birth among females, according to the CIA, and life expectancy M is life expectancy at birth among males, according to the CIA. And then, like other data sets, these variable descriptions are hot linked. So if you click on them, they'll take you to that column in the data set, which can be pretty useful, especially if you need to for an exercise or for an assignment if you need to copy a column out of the workbook and paste it onto another worksheet, that's an easy way to find it, easy way to do it. Um, like some of our other data sets, this variable descriptions page, the descriptions are contained in a table, which has some nice features, you know, like you can sort it alphabetically or reverse alphabetically. And I like this category listing because you can see all the categories that are overview and you can, select just one or two of them if you're particularly interested in say them interested in health and internet you can click those and then i get a subset of the data set that are the variables related to health and internet and i can see their names i could click over to them i can read more about them so there's a lot that you can do with this data set and we use it a lot in the book and similar to my recommendation about the states data set you can find a lot of data about countries in the world on the internet. Some of it's just fantastic and updated. And there are 169 countries, which is, you know, a fair amount of data to enter, but not unmanageable. You can do that probably uh, within a cup of coffee if you find a good data source. And even if you have to man, you know, insert a column and manually enter it, you can add data to this data set. So if you have an assignment in your class to conduct, do original analysis or conduct your analysis or, or do, do analysis of data that's not featured in the book, this is a good way to go about it. I think this is something that it is feasible to add to and do some original analysis. I mean, there are a lot of variables in the book, uh, variables you know, discussed in the book and variables that are already in the data set, but we don't cover everything. And you know, by the time that this is published, newer data is available and we won't be offended and we'll actually be pretty happy if you are interested in something that's not featured in the data set and you can find the data yourself and enter it. Uh, we would en encourage that and then be very happy for you and hopefully that the um, organization of the data set makes it easy to do it. One, one thing I would comment with the world data set that's kind of different than the state's data set um, Data sources sometimes use different names for countries and inc some include some countries and others don't include countries. So say like a country like, uh, well, a disputed country like Taiwan would be included in some data sets and not included in others. And then there are other countries in the world where um, the name of the country is sometimes varies from one data set to another. Um, like there was a country in Burma, which is still referred to Burma in some data sets, but it, with a change of regime became the country of Myanmar. So in our data set, we refer to it as Myanmar, but it wouldn't be too surprising if you found a, a data set that called it Burma, uh, which isn't too hard to, to match up, but you need to be careful with that if you're sorting the data in alphabetical order. Um, 
you may find some mismatches and need to watch out that the rows of your data are lining up country by country and check the names when you're doing something like that. Again, if you're doing a project where you're trying to add data to an existing data set, it's possible to do and can be very exciting to do, but you got to be careful when you do it. Here's the debate experiment workbook uh, for a U.S. presidential debate experiment workbook. This would be the longer title. This is a really fun one. So this is the data collected by Jamie Druckmann from Northwestern University, an experiment he did uh, regarding the 1960 American presidential debate between John F. K., uh, John F. Kennedy and, and Richard Nixon. Uh, Kennedy was a senator at that time, and Richard Nixon was the vice president of the United States, and it was the first tele live televised debate between presidential candidates, so kind of a watershed moment in political media, and some of the country watched it on TV, and some of the country watched it on radio. I know TVs weren't um, as common as they are now, um, and it's an interesting bit of political folklore how the media that people used to follow the presidential debate affected their perceptions of the debate with some folks who watched it on television favoring Kennedy while those favoring watching it on radio uh, tended to favor Richard Nixon and it's kind of a folklore of presidential politics and Jamie went about testing it with uh, an experiment where he recruits students to watch it on rewatch this debate on TV or listen to it just on audio and the workbook on the data page contains the data that he collected from the experiment so the subjects are numbered looks like there are uh, 171 subjects and you can see the assignment made here to listen to it on radio or watch it on television and then a variety of information collected about them including some variables on who they thought won the debate and who was better on the issues had more integrity um, like our other workbooks, it has a variable descriptions page and it's pretty short and sweet here, but listing the variables in the order you'll find them in the data set. And you can click on them if you want to go back to the data page to look at that column. And it has a brief description here for what the variables are in the data set. And we analyze, uh, do, do some analysis of this data set in the book. And uh, it's an interesting one and probably our only example of true random assignment, random assignment in an experiment and, that you can analyze. And I hope that you enjoy working with that data set. Now, unlike other data sets like the state's data set or the world data set, it probably would be difficult, if not impossible, to add a new variable to this because the units of analysis are students recruited by Jamie Druckmann at Northwestern University um, about a decade ago. So you'd have to somehow find these students if you were to say, if you want to ask them another question besides their uh, say political ideology, whether they're a sophomore and their gender, if you want to ask them more about like say their media consumption or background or their socioeconomic status, possibly to track these down and the data are an, uh, anonymized so you can't really add to this data set anymore but there are probably different interesting ways that you could analyze it that we haven't done and we, we call on you to analyze it for several exercises in the book and hope that you find it interesting i, I like it because it's uh it's good it's it's good data and a great experiment by someone who really knows what they're doing. But also, I think it's just it's a really interesting moment in U.S. political history. And so it can you know, help us understand the methodology, uh, you know, data, data analysis, political analysis, but also teaches a lot about the effect of the media and interesting moment in U.S. political history. I won't give away the conclusions of the paper and encourage you to do the analysis yourself and follow along the analysis of this data set when we cover it in the book. The Presidential Elections Workbook is something we put together specifically for this Excel companion. It contains data on uh, US federal elections over time. And the, re the reason we did it is the other data sets are cross-sectional, meaning they're generally data from the same, collected the same 
time period for the states or for the world or within one experiment. And you want to have some data that has uh, variation over time, uh, some time series type data. So uh, that's what's contained in this data set. Um, if I click to the data page, you can see it covers presidential elections. Well, actually all federal elections, not, not just presidential uh, midterm elections as well, by year starting in 1930. And this takes us up to 2018. Um, so it could be updated, but that was as updated as we had when we were writing the book. Um, and you can see uh, coding for different items of information about the elections every two years, whether a presidential election, uh, the incumbent president's party, the president's vote share, the president's approval prior to the election, and some other information related to the election. There's quite a bit of interesting research on the effect of the economy on presidential elections, the effect of presidential popularity, other conditions that exist in the country on presidential elections, some interesting theories about the effect of a midterm election on the president, um, and then just changes over time in the American electorate. So a lot of interesting ideas you can explore. And like our other data sets, the uh, workbook. This workbook contains a variable descriptions page where you can read more detailed information about the variables in the data set. It's just listed in alphabetical order here, um, including you know, where we got the, what, what, what the information includes, like this Dow Jones variable is the percentage increase or decrease in Dow Jones stock market average from Yahoo Finance. and includes the link from the data source where you could look up some more information or perhaps update the information. And this one doesn't have a categories uh, tab simply because there aren't that many variables in the data set. And you, you probably can handle reading this straight through without having to subset it or sort it. Uh, so an interesting one. And like the state's data set or the world data set, this is one I think it would be feasible to add to if you think that there's a variable that you'd like to study for a project or a paper that's not included in this data set already. And there are a lot that you could add just to give an example off the top of my head. If you wanted to consider like the effect of war or foreign policy crisis on presidential elections, that information is not already coded in the data set and it's probably accessible on the internet or for some reliable sources and you could add a column to the data set to insert a new variable and as long as you are careful to track it by year um, that could be an interesting variable to study and you could probably think of others others on your own that would be uh, interesting to study um, items that might affect presidential elections or turnout in elections, the outcome of elections, all sorts of things. So this is obviously a, an active area of research when we have a few examples in the book that are related to the to presidential elections. And hopefully you find it as interesting as we do.